the let me see the the female release the it, we were not releasing half a percent of females we're releasing about one female per 1500 males so we do inevitably release um some females so then you have to say what is the consequence so the numbers are far lower than you than you were they were indicating by them they are actually a little short-lived in the wild because of the modification and that makes them substantially less able to transmit dengue or other viruses that might be around than a regular mosquito might be but otherwise in terms of uh what happens if an ant or a scavenger or a bird or something eats one or or if one to the extent that we to the very small extent that we release females they are essentially the same as a as a normal mosquito uh, the what else can I say the, oh, the the populated unpopulated area thing I think that's a confusion between different trials so in Malaysia uh, the the release experiment was in an unpopulated area with with a lot of um, information with the the community and po signs around it and that kind of thing but an unpopulated area in the Cayman Islands it was in an in an inhabited area and also in Brazil where we're releasing at the moment in an inhabited area this mosquito is very human associated so uh, mos mo populations of this mosquito Aedes aegypti are always around humans they don't fly very far away from humans they bite humans and they breed around humans so if you want to uh, try to control an Aedes aegypti population that population will inevitably be around humans and so the exception if you like was the Malaysia th uh, experiment which was in an uninhabited area and there we were looking at how far these mosquitoes fly compared with with an unmodified laboratory strain so a side-by-side -side comparison of two strains in the absence of a wild population of mosquitoes but that was a somewhat uh, exceptional experiment um, I'm sorry I have some notes of your questions but I may um, I may omit some other oh, survival uh, aspect so in the laboratory under ideal conditions ideal for survival conditions so when we're very nice to them uh, indeed three or four percent of the of the offspring that inherit one copy of this gene survive through to adult. Those are weak and short-lived. In the field where we have done this sort of experiment with some other insects uh, that had similar traits, actually a higher survival rate, we found uh, no survival in field conditions. Uh, life is just tougher in the field than it is in, in these ideal laboratory circumstances. And so we would expect a much lower proportion of these insects to, uh, to survive to adulthood in the field than that three to four percent where we have looked for that in uh the cayman islands particularly uh trial we found no survivors in the field but the numbers that we can recapture are not so large that you could definitively say it was zero but but in fact we found uh in fact we found uh none and then indeed when we stopped releasing so in, so this question of can it establish or, or is sometimes phrased is it an invasive uh, Luke if you could wrap, wrap up in just a moment to give more time in, in terms of is it an invasive species uh, at the end of each of release period in the Cayman Islands for example uh, of course we monitored what happened to the to the transgene in the wild population and indeed it disappeared rapidly after release so the males that we released die and that was that's within a few days and they were undetectable in a week or so. I, I don't have the exact numbers but within a matter of days and then the females that have mated them correspondingly die and so the the transgene was undetectable in the region in a matter of uh, a few weeks after we stopped releasing so no the even though we released uh, several million mosquitoes the, the population did not establish and disappear rapidly after we stopped releasing okay all right thank you